and welcome to another episode of Experts Speak. I'm Michael Delon. Today, I am talking with Carlin Ankrum. And well, Carlin, thank you, first of all, for spending some time with me on my podcast. Thank you for having me, Michael. I'm so excited to chat today. Oh, you are welcome. It's going to be lots of fun because uh, Carlin is the, uh, she's the founder, lead strategist at Oh Snap Social. And she hel helps business owners make social media easy. And I know it is it, the, the bane of our existence for most of us because it's just not normal. It's not in my sweet spot. And so I can't wait to unpack a little bit about this um, thing called social media. Tell us, as we get ready to, to dive into this, Carla, how in the world did you get doing what you're doing today? Yeah, so I have a background in journalism. And so when I was at school studying for my journalism degree, this whole phenomenon called Web 2.0, I mean, we're now on Web 3, but Web 2.0 back in the yesteryears, right, yeah. uh, came to fruition and folks were starting to utilize social media as a place to push out information which was kind of like a PR tool. But what they weren't doing was having that conversation that needs to happen within, you know, air quote, social right. media. And so that really sparked my interest. And I worked for a series of startups and some membership organizations and a brand agency. And then I realized, okay, this has been fun. I propped up all of the brand agencies you know, operations and systems and was managing the social media for everyone on our team. There were seven people on the team and I was ma managing every single one of their voices mm -hmm. uh, by myself. <laughs> and I was like, there's got to be something else here. Yeah. And so Osnap Social was born um, and it kind of was at a crossroads for me where I was like, I'm turning 30. I'm either going to do this or I'm not going to do this and forever regret and wonder what if. Yeah. So I, I, hired a business coach to give me the courage as well as the language to mm -hmm. quit my job because I am not someone who quits. And it was the hardest thing I've ever had to do, but is the most impactful and best thing I've ever done in my life thus far um, professionally. Fun, so. fun, yeah. fun, fun. Well, that's cool because that, that story kind of weaves into what you're doing now because you, you hit a... um. Uh, a wall at, at at one level, you realize the future needed to be different than the current present. And and you found a way you hired a coach. I'm, I'm a big fan of hiring coaches, right? To help you navigate that. And I think a lot of business owners struggle with social media. We, we, we get our cues, unfortunately, from social media. And we listen to what they are saying. And mm -hmm. it's just, well, dare I say, it's a, it's a hassle. It's a pain. For those of us who aren't schooled in it, it doesn't come natural to us, and it is super complex. I did a live feed on something the other day, and it didn't work, and I had to go back and figure out why didn't it work, and it's, come on, and really, talk to me about social media media. What are what are some of the struggles business owners normally have? I, I'm sure I just voiced a few, but- Oh, and, yeah. And let's talk about those struggles, and why is social media so important, and how do we, how do we bridge that gap? Absolutely. It's definitely a place to connect the digital the digital dots, right? So social media is often the first uh, instance someone discovers someone and their services. And I think the biggest hurdle, no matter what industry you're in, what you know age demographic you are, we all have the same struggles because social media moves at lightning's pace. Like yeah. it's hard to keep up. And even as someone who's in it every single day, Mm -hmm. uh, it's a lot and it's constantly evolving and changing. And so it's my job to make sure that my clients and those that are reading my blog and things like that are constantly updated, but we all have the same struggles. One, it's how to feel authentically me on social media when there's all of this noise coming at us. And then the other part is the techno babble of it all, right? The mechanics, the how to do it. And that's where a lot of people, and this is kind of like my pet peeve, is people are like, oh, my neighbor down the street can do my social media for me. And I'm like, they can do the mechanics of it and the, and navigate the techno babble, but they don't have the strategic mindset that is required of someone who has the controls of your social media. Yeah. And so that's another thing is we're all tasked with like, well, I don't have time. Yeah. To do social. So can I do it with someone else? And the answer is yes but you have to pick that person or that team accordingly yeah. um, so that you don't lose your own voice 
Yeah. In all the content noise. Yeah. And that's so important. I hope people hear that, you know, in, in our business, I get a lot of um, people coming to me and they say, great, I'm going to get my book done. And then I'm going to do yeah. that free plus shipping thing. And I'm like, okay, you can do that. You know, and they follow the Russell Brunsons of the world, which are great. Yeah. I love Russell Brunson, all of this. Yeah. But what we realize is, is as a small business owner, we don't have the back end sales machine that Russell Brunson has that helps pay for all of that. And yeah. it's like, it, you have to have the strategy first. Yes. The, the, the technique works marvelously when it fits your strategy. Yeah. And I think so many times in, in social media, we just go, oh, well, they're posting on YouTube. I should post you. I They're doing LinkedIn. I, I, Right. It's like throwing spaghetti. Stop it. <laughs> Reach out to Carlin. Have a strategy session first and figure out. I mean, I, I think it was Steve Jobs. I, somebody told me it was him. Yeah. That he he said one time, he's like, I, I'm, I don't know. I'm, I'm slaughtering. I make more money by what I say no to than what I say yes to. Mm. And, and that is so very important to stay focused on what you are trying to do. Speak to Yeah. That. I mean, that is something that I just recently, I was in the most forested country of the world, Suriname. Um, it's in South America. And I was presenting at a conference there talking about this exact thing, how the imposter syndrome kind of creeps in. And we keep, we we look at everywhere else than focusing on our lane. And I brought up um, a picture of Michael Phelps, the Olympic swimmer, and he was focused. And then in the background of this photo is his competitor who's looking at him. Right. And it brought up a story that one of my coaches shared with me uh, once of her daughter swimming in a, a swim meet. And she was five strokes ahead of everybody else. She popped up her head, looked around at all of her competitors, and she lost the race because she let her goal get fuzzy. And so anytime you're like, is this for me? Is this not for me? I want you to refocus on what's the strategy? What's the goal? And more importantly, what is your why? Yeah. Why are you doing this? Why are we, why are you sharing a book on this? Why is this piece of content co content relevant for your audience? Yeah. Uh, Cause once you have that <laughs> drilled in and focused. Yeah. The rest 100%. of it is. And, and let's take Michael Phelps one more step. So I've heard the other yeah. story of, of he jumped in, he, he was in a competition, right? He jumped in the water and his goggles fell down off of his face. Didn't phase him at all because he had actually practiced that knowing it would happen someday. And it, he did, and he won because he's like, well, yeah. no big deal. How many times in business do we hit what I call turbulence? And we go, Ooh, oh, this yeah. wasn't what I thought. And so we start looking around and it's like, no focus. And so- but I, I want to I want to back up because you're you're saying some things that are that are hitting my hot buttons and what I what I yeah. preach all the time, yeah. Being authentically me. One of one of my marketing principles is people will buy who you are more than what you do because there are so many people in every industry. I want to buy you. I want to know you. Yes. And I talk to authors all the time and say. I want to share your story in the book. I want to. I want your print newsletter to have pictures of your family and your dog. And the, well, uh, nobody cares about that. I'm like, no, actually, everybody cares about. It. Speak to the personality aspect of of the person, the brand, all of that. I totally agree with that, and I think a lot of people struggle with the balance of like professional versus personal because we have all been conditioned through schooling and things like that that we have to maintain this like buttoned up like approach of being just put together and nothing is messy and and the reality is life sometimes what I say is like life be life in like sometimes it just gets a little messy and for myself for example I have a 15 month old mm. like I'm lucky I put makeup on today like, yeah. <laughs> like I'm just being real and I think people appreciate that because it makes you relatable and people do business with other people, yeah, not logos. And so how can you infuse your personal story, your personal brand, things that light you up into your social content, just like you put those stories in your book? And, and more importantly, having that alignment of that authenticity, who you show up in real life versus who you show up online, it needs to be the same because people will call you on that. Oh, hundred percent. Hundred percent. If I see you on social media one way, and, I, and then we have a Zoom call, and you show up differently, immediately something in my soul goes, something's not right. 
I may not be able to put my finger on it, but it's enough to put up a flag. And you never want that. I just want to be me. And, yeah. and and realize at the end of the day, if you don't like me, great, go away. Even better, honestly. Yeah, because <laughs> you know? we won't work well together at all. But those who like oh. me, love me, right? And that's what we want to do in business is to be real and to, and to, to build those. I always tell people that it, it's like if, if Carlin, if you and I went out to a, a coffee shop, yeah, we would probably spend the first 15 minutes doing the dance, right? Trying to find common ground and... and why wait? Do that on social media. Do that in your marketing. Let people Good know. Who point. Are. Yeah. And and then when they show up on your sales call or whatever you call it, it's a second or a third call. They already know you. They like you. They see your process. I got people showing up all the time because of the preconditioning we do going, man, I love the fact that you were in ministry. All right. I love the fact that you adopted. I love. Yeah. It's all because of, of how I show up everywhere. Yes. I don't have to spend 20 minutes dancing with people. I'm not a great yeah. dancer. Um, anyway, talk, talk about art now. I can teach now. you some moves. I can there teach you, you some moves. There you go. My girl's in hip hop, <laughs> you know. I, I So talk about um, how, how, do you, how do you help business owners? What are some basic, really simple steps business owners could take today to go, okay, this social media thing, I know I need to do it. I don't know how to do it. What would be one or two things that they could do? And then we'll talk about how they can work with you and all of that. Absolutely. I think one or two things that you can do is show up on camera as you. It is a scary phenomenon if you have not done it before ever. So if you're on Instagram, share. I challenge you today to share a story. It's gone in 24 hours. That's the good news. Uh, And it'll help you get out of your own way. And you could simply share what you're doing in your office. What are you struggling with when you're writing that chapter 14? Because man, that's been a doozy, right? Share those things. Share your opinion because I will tell you, the, and you just kind of alluded to this too, Michael, you share your most polarizing opinions to attract the people who are for you 100%. and repel people who are not for you. Yep. And that's the best part. Because you're not on social media to be liked by everybody, despite what some influencers will say. Right. Right? I, we're there to share our mission and who yeah. we're supposed to be. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. that's what I, I would say. Show up on video. Because okay. video is where it's at right now. So yeah. challenge yourself self to show up on video, even if it's simple as a 15 second high on an Instagram story. Yeah. Um, and that would be my only ask for you that's to do. It. That's awesome. Uh, is, that's enough for a lot of us, I think. Well, it, it is. And, and with technology, it's so simple. Do it on your computer, do it on your phone, do it on wherever and just go. And whether it's there, um, LinkedIn, Facebook, wherever you are, because you don't have to be everywhere. Okay, there are so many social platforms. Choose oh, yeah. the one or two or three that you want to be on and just be there. Yes. And when somebody says, hey, did you know there's a new social media app? You have to be there. I remember when, when Apple came out with, um, oh, I don't even know what it was, their little group thing a few months ago. Yeah. And everybody said, you have to be there. Everybody's going to be there. And you're going to go out of business if you're not there. I'm like, no, I'm not. And no, I never no. went. And, no. and there, anyway, be Let the discovery be. Yeah. Let the discovery be for me. I will go on all the apps just because I need to figure out what's working. But at the same time, I only hang out really on two. I hang out on Instagram because it's fun. Yeah. And I know that I can be consistent there with sharing behind the scenes of who I am in my business and LinkedIn. Yeah. Because that's where people do business with me and people are looking for business help and opportunity. And that's where I make most of my sales is through LinkedIn connections. So Those are the two that I know that I can be consistent on that support my why and my bottom line. Yeah. Uh, and so go there. And I, and I love what you said. Do a 15 second video. You don't have to do. I mean, it could be longer, but yeah. you don't have to do long. It's just, hey, here's what's going on. Or, you know, what? I just had a had a prospect call me or email me with this question. And here's how I answered that. Exactly. And answer the question and then be done. And, yeah. and do that. If you did that once a week. You would have a a better media presence in the next quarter than 95% of your competitors. That part. It's not hard. It doesn't take a long time. What it takes, strategy. Yep. And consistency and be willingness to put yourself out there. Yeah. One of my, another marketing principles, consistency over time. Mm -hmm. Right. Marketing is a long tail game. It's a, it's a marathon. Oh man. Yes. And you have to be there over and over and over and over and over and over. And you just share. 
And it's like, well, what do I share? It's like, talk about anything that any of your prospects are dealing with, any of your clients are dealing with, but do it. Now, you, you've got different programs for different people because business owners are at different places. Some are solopreneurs and they're trying, they're wearing like 13 different hats. Others are corporate yeah. executives who have everything in place, but you've got programs for like everybody. Just real highlight what, how, how do somebody, how, how does somebody work with you? What are the different options? Yeah. Yeah. So we walk everyone through our fan fire starter framework. Do not ask me to say that seven times fast because it'll just be like, blah, 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 blah. Um, but we walk everyone through a pulse check audit where we pop the hood, look at the numbers, kind of have those benchmarks drawn in the sand. Then we develop a strategy. And so we walk everyone, whether you're a corporate executive company or solopreneur, those are the first two pulse check audit and strategy, because you have to have a strategy in order to propel and implement. Then the last part is advancement. That's where we have those different options, whether you want to do it together, kind of done with us. We can offer some of those consulting sessions and content development sessions uh, where by the end of those two hours, you're going to have like 15 to 36 pieces of content, like ready to just like plug and play. Um, We're really good at getting yourself out of your own way during those sessions. Uh, And then we also have the whole done for you scope where we create all the content calendars and the content videos, all of that uh, to implement and then measuring the metrics um, every single month. So that's kind of the the quick version. Um, but yeah, we absolutely love helping everyone that we can with getting that content developed. And we found the best is for solopreneurs. They have to have some of that ownership, but oftentimes it's just the planning and the getting out of our own way and batching the content so that yeah. they can free up their time to really uh, lean into what it is that they love to do. Yeah. And that's really good because as a solopreneur, small business owner, been in business one to five years, right? You're still wearing a lot of hats. You're doing, you need to own your marketing, but you don't need to do the marketing, right? You need, you you can, you can connect with Carlin, have the strategy, say, this is how it fits in. Here's what I'm trying to do now. Okay. I want to hire you, Carlin, to go get it done. We'll have our meetings, whatever, but I'm going to spend my time working with prospects and clients and doing where the money comes in. And that's how a business owner doesn't, um, relegate marketing we delegate marketing yeah. we still own it it's my business i'm responsible but i don't have to know the bells and the whistles and the techno and, but we have to be yeah. aligned and i think that's one one of the things that i saw uh, when we when we were thinking about bringing you on is y- you have this you have a a do it yourself program you have a done with you program and you have a done for you program so yeah. it's really wherever you are yes. in your social media journey uh, yes. carlin and her team can can really help you Build that strategy, have a clear message, have a good, consistent brand, and and get out there on the platforms you need to be on so yes. that you can share show up and share up. Oh, there you go. Um I like it. <laughs> in the right, in the right way. All right. Yeah. Somebody sitting there, you just scratch their itch and they're like, okay, where do I find this person? How do, how do they how do people find you? Yes. Uh, the best place to find me is osnapsocial.com. Uh, that's where you can book a, an intro call with me to chat. If you have any challenges, you can also sign up for my newsletter um, to get free tips in your inbox every single Friday. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. Oh, snapshotsocial.com. I'll have that in the show notes. And um, thank you, Carlin, for what you do for helping business owners really navigate this uh, this maze of social media and to find some clarity so that they can show up as themselves and yeah. really bond with their audience. Thank you for uh, what you do. And, and thanks for being my guest today. It was really fun to chat with you. Likewise. I love your energy, Michael. Thank you so much for having me. You are so <laughs> welcome. Thanks for listening to uh, Expert Speak. We'll talk to you again soon.